Hello, Grandma. Is that you? <laughs> Welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Natty Project. In the last episode, we went into the cave somewhere over there. And then we went into the Cerebus Electronics or Cerebus building that's over there. And we ended up turning on the radio tower, which is like somewhere over that way, I think. Yeah. So we ended up finding a crowbar while we were doing some stuff. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but that's all we did. And I busted open this door. Left you guys in suspense for the last episode. Now we're going to head up into this tower where Daddy was extremely angry up in the study with those men. Came out of here. Never seen him so mad in my life. Not even when I stole his car. Discover the story. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe we should just, like, not. <gasps> Ooh, code book. Yes! Okay, what do we got here? Map of the world. I live right there. It's exactly where I live. So you pause there and you zoom in, you'll see my house. Okay, what else have we got here? Um, I guess that's all we have to do. Are you guys ready for this shit? This is going to be intense. It should never have happened. So I'm here, in tears, writing about the project and my daughter. We had left with the most honorable intentions. We felt invincible, trusting in our study and our calculations. But as it often happens in such situations, something unpleasant was bound to happen. This time, we had unintentionally awakened the souls of the dead. Two years ago, a short time after my wife's accident, an old college friend and I went over to went over old quantum physics theories. We soon realized that we had found a way to communicate with afterlife entities. It seemed to work. During the day, we built antenna, antennas, antennas prototypes, antenna prototypes, and at night behind our radio, we asked questions. It took almost a month of hard work, but finally, someone answered. It spoke about our present, past, and future. We wanted to go deep into the study and bring our absurd adventure to a rational level. So we trusted the promises of Cerebus Electronic. They would have developed the antennas and funded the whole project if we moved to their island. They seemed to believe in us, but money distorts the minds and corrupts the hearts. They forced me to try a connection without having finished building the third tower. We all knew it wasn't wise, but I had no choice when I was presented with my letter of resignation ready to be signed. It was a tragedy. Within a few seconds, a powerful lightning storm hit the island. Far away, we heard cold voices call our names. Only in that moment was I really scared by the power of what we had found out. Anna, my daughter, was coming back home when all of this happened. She was bringing me a big red ruby she had found in the cave when the stone tossed by the wind hit her on the forehead. I killed her trying to save us. I don't think that's right. They ruined my life, they destroyed my work, they killed my daughter. If it wasn't for their greed, there would have been no storm and Anna would still be alive. I miss her so much that I can't breathe. I'll leave tomorrow morning. I have no reason to stay here anymore. Sorry, Anna, your father. And this is the Italian version. And that's it. And we got the achievement, her story. I thought the game was gonna end there. It sounded like it was one of those kind of like, um, game over. Now you know everything, no reason for you to be here anymore either. Get off my island! But we're still here. You know what we gotta do. Let's get the fuck away from this stupid goddamn thing. Uh, where the hell is those stupid stairs? Jump! Alright, I must have to keep going. Maybe it's just. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. It's been like a little bit since I played, so. Not everything is fresh on how I actually got here. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the house. We're going to play with the radio, and I bet you we're going to try to contact our daughter. If that's who I am. If I'm actually her father. That sounded bad. I, I, like, I know I'm her father, but maybe I'm not the father, per se. Like, maybe I'm another person on the island. 
Because if he said he had no reason to stay here, then who am I? Unless he just came back. Maybe he needs closure or something like that. He feels the guilt riding up on him and he just had to come in, complete the story, and use the towers to talk to her. Now I've got everything. I can call for help. Achievement unlocked. The end? Question mark. Tugboat GAA here. Can you hear me? We've just received an SOS signal coming from your position. Over. Yes, you did. My name is Jeremy Parker. So I'm not the father? I'm the only survivor of the plane crash. No, I'm not. Rescue me. Please and thank you. Oh, there he is. We've identified your coordinates, Jeremy. We'll be there soon. Over and oot. You know what my greatest fear has always been, Jeremy? The idea of flying. It's always scared me. But now my point of view on the world is completely different from this limbo. I've seen my father cry every night, first for mom, and then for me. He doesn't know it yet, but thanks to you now, I'm free to go beyond. Ah, Yay me. I warned you about the ruby. It's a very precious thing. I ask you one last favor when you'll be back in the civilized world. Go find my father for me. Tell him I miss him and I will wait for him here with mom. Only when we are to get together again we can fly to a better place. Isn't that sweet? And here I thought this was going to be some horrific jump scare make me shit my pants kind of game and it's such a sweet sweet story about a daughter who tragically passed on and her father's journey to find closure and now he does yay Anna she's not wearing a top <laughs> I like her pink and green shoes though very, very nice. I believe that is the end. I can't really explain what happened after that day, but something in me had radically changed. I saw Anna in my dream the following two nights. She showed me other moments of her life. Her house, her family, her father. I found the little girl's dad in the small abandoned house in the suburbs of London on a cold December Monday. We sat down over tea and I started to tell him my story. I told him about the island and his daughter. He could hardly keep a grip on his emotions, but his eyes glowed. I've seen a man destroyed by memories in front of me. At the end of the evening, I took leave. We shook hands and hugged. It was the most sincere hug I've ever got in my whole life. I learned a great lesson that day. But whom could I tell this story to without seeming crazy? None. Many people would just find it crazy. But nonetheless, it was the truth. It's just when you think you know something that you have to look at by different point of view. Even if it may seem silly or absurd, you must try. Dare to change. Find new ways. 
thank you for playing Mateo. And there you go, guys. That is it. So, definitely a really cool game. I like the concept behind that, man. Like it was the uh, whole Ethan Carter kind of thing and, uh, you know, not as many scary things kind of going on but i like the story behind it like the uh the way it was done things ran smooth i mean for the price you really can't go go wrong guys so if you do want to pick it up like i said in the last episode the link's down in the description below and it is free to play so yes this is a sponsored video and i make all the money off of everything that you guys pay for the game so feel free to pick it up for yourselves guys it's definitely a cool little play i'd say maybe two three hours of gameplay tops and that's if you're kind of exploring everything like i did and you get lost a few times along the way so i hope you guys enjoyed this series thank you for sticking around i appreciate it very much and i will see you guys in the next series which same time i'm guessing probably the same day take care